Welcome to this evening's webinar on Specialist Mathematics. My name is Brian Lann and I'm your host for this evening. Your presenters will be Peter Flynn and Neil Woods. And you see there from the TI website an overview of this session. This is me. Um, I'm currently teaching an uh, engineering diploma at Wodonga TAFE uh, and I am a T-Cubed instructor and I enjoy working with the technologies that that involves. Peter Flynn, likewise, a T-Cubed instructor and particularly interested in the effects of CAS on teaching, learning and assessment. Peter works at uh, quite a lot in teacher training, in mentoring and in his uh, contributions to textbooks as well. Also, um, Neil Woods, also a very experienced senior mathematics teacher working at the Distance Education Centre of Victoria. If you have students who are involved through that, then it's quite likely that Neil will know them, particularly in the specialist mathematics area. Neil also enjoys working with technologies, particularly computer algebra systems, and has made contributions to textbooks and workshops at these local, state, national and international levels. But that's enough for me. Who you want to be hearing from now is Neil, who I know has a lot of interesting things and particularly some good shortcuts uh, for you because we not only want our students to be able to use the technology and use it uh, quickly, correctly and efficiently, but we want, to, we want them to use it as quickly as they can, particularly in the exam situation. Neil has has coordinated some nice uh, shortcuts for you that may be useful. Well, um, a few a uh, couple of years ago, I you keep the, whenever I run workshops, I keep discovering these uh, shortcuts, and I mentioned to Peter Fox and a few others. I said, well, why don't we you know look at compiling them and this there's a lot of ones out there but I'm just gonna I've got a document which I've sent out which hopefully you've, you've either had a chance to download or if not you can you can uh, get it later um, and I just thought it'd be helpful for you as t teachers to look at shortcuts when you're on a computer or just for students to look at shortcuts when they're sitting in front of their handheld so I'm just going to run through a few of these I've got this document which uh, you'll, you'll get if you download the material and the, the first page I've just got all the controls now all of these ones in here uh, if you got a Mac, you just uh, press Command. I'm gonna. I'm getting this, some of these checked out with a Mac person to make sure before I get them sent out officially. But um, the, all of these will appear in the menu somewhere. So if you see Control C, um, it'll be under a copy somewhere. So you can find all of these in the menus. And I've got some other ones that are hidden. But just to highlight a few, the the B, which I'll be some of the ones I'll be using. I'll be using the uh, check syntax and store when I'm, and that only works when I'm in the programming calc, calc, calculation. Um, control T is a, a handy one, sorry, Control I, which uh, we'll get to, is also inserting a page. Now, you can, a lot of you know that already, but it, um, you can get it from the home screen, but I'll also mention that. Um, control K, which you don't use all that often, but it can be handy to select, a, if you've got a split screen, you can select one of the screens and then either delete it. Uh, another handy one, which I found and discovered when I was looking at this, was the Control L. So I've got that down twice. So if you do Control L, that actually will display the variable list, and that can be quite handy when you're on a computer. And I'll give you examples of these in a minute. Um, the other one's uh, Control T for table. A lot of you might be aware of that. And then, of course, you get down here to Control Y and Control Z. The, the lifesaver is Control Z because when you stuff things up, you just push Control Z and you can go back where you were before. So that's really helpful. Some of the hidden ones. Um, I won't go through all of these, but the, the main one that I'll be using is Control 4 and Control 6. Uh, if you've got two pages, it can be very handy to sort of, instead of having to fool with it, you can sort of split the, split the pages or, sorry, or um, combine the pages. Um, control underscore, which is Control space, that's a handy one to have. Con uh, what, some that I've prompted me to get this shortcut list was Control minus, which will be derivative Control plus is integral. So that can be a nice shortcut if you're in a hurry, to, especially with this calculus that we're doing now. Another, another one I just discovered, which we're um, when doing some research, is just the, the carriage return, which is this little one down here underneath control, the integral, which is add a row to a matrix. So instead of having to go in and define a matrix every time and one by three and all that sort of stuff, you can just add a row or add a column. There's two, two sets there, uh, one's for the... Um, 
one's for the handheld and one's for the uh, you know, com computer. So those are really the main ones. And the last one's just down here um, in the hidden ones. Domain is what, uh, these are what functions, and I'm trying to make improve that list. But these are the ones that don't appear in the menu. So they've added domain, and you can get that from the catalog. And they've added Euler, things like true, which are handy. Uh, if you want to compare if two expressions are equal, then I'll cover that. And the last couple in here, things like control equals, sorry, uh, less than equal will give you the less than or equal to sign. A really handy one if you're on the keyboard is the store operation. Uh, you may be aware of um, control, uh, sorry, colon equals, but if you go reverse, you go equals colon. That's equivalent of the store menu, and I'll be using that one. I use square root a lot, SQRT, instead of going and getting the square root sign. And the other ones which are handy would be um, um, at E for the for the E and at I for I. So I'm going to put that away. I'm going to go through some examples here with you. And I'm just going to basically do this with the uh, calculus menu. So because this is calculus, I'm just make sure you're aware of the uh, some of the commands in there. So obviously derivative integral um, and the shortcuts, which I'll show you in a minute. But before you do, just be aware that there's a lot of other options in here. And, Sometimes people might be hesitant to use them because they're not really sure what or what you have to put in. And you, I really encourage you and encourage your students to go down. If you've got something in there like um, tangent line, for instance, you don't know how to use it, um, just make sure you just push the catalog, press the catalog, and go down to T for tangent line, which I happen to be on at the moment. And you can see that you're not putting in an equation. You're putting in an expression, a variable, and then a value. And I'll give you an example of that in a second. And then um, other ones which we'll get to. But just to start with, I want to just do an uh, integral. Remember, I can go shift uh, minus, which uh, will give me the derivative sign, sorry. And if I go control Z to undo that, I go shift plus will give me the integral sign. Very handy. If I wanted to go to that thing like the tangent line, I can get it out of the menu or I can get it out of the, um, the catalog. Just before I do, though, make sure you're aware of the template down here. You've got all, you've also got integrals and, and uh, derivatives in there, and second derivatives and all that. So you can also, sometimes you're stuck in other applications and you don't have the menus. You have to, you can get them from the catalog or you can get them from the um, the, the uh, templates. So I'll give you an example with uh, one which was just, just like we had before, which is domain. So if I go down here to um, the catalog and I go to domain, I just push D for domain, don't know where it is, and you just scroll down. Sometimes it's easier to go E and then go up than it is to go D and go down, but if you go to domain, it's asked for an expression and a variable, so a lot of people are familiar with that one. So if I do that, I, I, uh, the expression, let, let's say I had something like square root, I'll use the shortcut square root of X and comma, Now I have to put a variable in, so it gives me the domain. If I had another one, if I can actually just type it out if I want to now, on the keyboard, I don't have to, again, whoops, got the phone domain. Um, I can just uh, say I want to do fraction, control, divide by, and I can say something like uh, 1 over x squared plus uh, minus 4, something like that. And I need to put a, the variable in there, so I go comma x, and you get your uh, domain. So that's a handy one. I'll do Euler, but just uh, I'll mention it briefly here. Because it's in the catalog, do E for Euler. Again, I'd probably be easier to go F for Euler and go back up because the Euler is going to be in here. That looks a bit complicated. I don't know, I'll be covering that in some more detail, but if you if you can't see it all, there's actually more down there, and so you can't expand that out, and you've got Euler, and it's asking you for an expression, a variable, a dependent variable, and then it's in a bracket it's got the... And we'll just do that one, And but I'll, I'm going to cover some more stuff on that later. Um, but if you go Euler, um, let's say we just have something like 2x, you go, you needed the independent, the de dependent, and then what the thing called for next was the um, limits, the low up. So you can go shift curly brackets in here, and you put in, say, something like 0, comma, 2. And then it wanted the y0 value, which, um, again, you'd have to look up the parameters if you haven't got it off the top of your head there. And say we started at 0, and then it asked for a h, and it had an optional parameter at the end, but... We'll put the h at, say, point, um, point zero point 0.1. So that will uh, generate uh, Euler values for you. And again, you have to show this without the technology, um, but it's a good way to confirm it. Now, I'm just going to clear that out of there and just give you an example of some of the things I found with some of my students to uh, use the um, 
because I don't have them in front of me, I, I find a lot of students, uh, I have to be very clear with the instructions. And um, if I, uh, I'm going to clear that out of there, menu. So I'm going to add a, uh, a graphs page. Now I can go to the menu, but of course if I just go one of the shortcuts is just control I. So if I go control I, the advantage with using control I is it actually lists not only the first seven, but it gives you the program editor as well. So they've added that in. So you don't see the eight and nine in the home screen, but you will see it in the, uh, um, when you push or press control I. So if I add a graphs page in there, I'm just going to define and get again control, I'll push control fraction and I'm just going to do a rational function because we get a lot of that in specialists. So if we go with x squared, say plus, sorry, x plus 2 over something like x squared. Well, don't know what happened there. <laughs> okay, x squared minus, uh, or sorry, plus 1. So if you graph that, it, a lot of students, I find, get caught up with just doing the exact or the approximate values. So you, you've obviously got your minimums and maximums, and you can find them in there, but of course they're decimal values. And I know that, uh, that I might be uh, telling you some pretty basic stuff here, but I'm working at a fairly basic level with some of my students because I don't, I can't really go and do all the really fancy stuff with them because I can't do the equivalent ones in some of the other they shall not be named technologies. So the, the important thing here is if you've got these tur two turning points, um, give them, a, uh, get the graph, give them an idea what they look like, but then go back and then you'll find that if you do say shift minus, which gives you derivative, I can go to find that function, but I've actually got it in there already, so I've got f1 of x. So if you if you want to get that um, idea of the relationship between them, I can get that. And if I, I can just have that answer, but if I highlight that, can again control C, I can go down here, solve that, and if I can co do control V for paste, Again, the control V doesn't work quite as well sometimes with the keyboard as it does on the uh, on the keyboard on the uh, handheld. So sometimes when I do the c computer control V, it doesn't uh, doesn't always always work. Anyway, I get my exact answers, and if I do control equals obviously, then you can get or control enter, then you get the approximate answers. So they can go back and say, well, I got negative. 4.2 and negative 0.2, and if you go back in here, you can see that that's, those are the x values of the approximate ones you got from the graph. So it's a really handy way of, of doing that. And, and similarly, if I want to get the second derivative, I can go and I can get into the template, and if I went over here and say, I can get the derivative of the derivative, but I went over here and got the second derivative or even the nth derivative. I got, the, in this case, the second derivative, and I decided to put that as x, and I went over here for, and again, I could do f1 of x. Um, gives me the second derivative. So let's go back and see what the second derivative does. I'll get rid of these for the moment. Um, gets a bit, bit cluttered if I get too caught up with it. So if we go in here and I say, get the, give them an idea where these things are. If I do the analyze graph, I get the points of inflection. Well, where are they? Well, I've got one in there. Um, analyze graph, I've got another one in here. And I've got another one in here. Okay, so again, that, that's not going to do you any good in specialist. It might be good to see what, where the points are, but you have to get the exact values. Now, again, this is kind of outside the scope of the course, but if I did a similar thing there with, a, with probably an easier function and did control C, and again, I could just have that as the answer. I don't have to go and copy it. But if I did the solve again and went um, algebra, um, solve, and pasted it, uh, equals zero, comma x, um, then I can get this quite bizarre answer, but then if I go control enter, you can see that the negative point six point four, the negative, and they, if you look at that, they kind of match up with these uh, x values over here. So whatever it is, and again, you can get the second derivative to get the nature of the turning point, so you can find out whether it's going to be positive or negative, which just can tell you whether the turning points and these points of inflections, they, you can get the, uh, it's very handy to do from the algebra thing, but get the graphing idea first. Now. A couple of things just for the integrals. I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to before for, I'm going to go into here and one of the shortcuts we can do tab and escape, which give me the uh, graph entry line. But if you do Control G, that's another one that we can use. I'm just going to go up, go up and grab the same one. Now, if I hold down the Shift key and use the arrow, sometimes you can grab and con again Control C that. Uh, that can be useful just to grab part of something. Now, again, that one it, it's 
particular in the calculator. And if I go down here, if I pasted that, then I'll get rid of some of those. I don't think that works. Let me just do that again quickly. Control G. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. I kept it the same. I wanted to change that to a minus. That's what. So if I go back here and do Control G again, it gets, it's just getting a bit messy. So what I'm going to do is go up, and I'm going to just not have that first one. I'll, I'll uh, untick that one and then go down and just look at the second one. I can get rid of all these points in here. But again, you can, you can find the same um, sort of um, turning points and points of inflection as you can, but you can also look at the asymptotes on that. I won't go through all that now because we're running out of time, but I just wanted to uh, emphasize in here, I'm going to go menu uh, 1, 5. The, deriv the integral, if I go into, again, that was shift plus, uh, give me the integral. If I go that, and uh, I've got f1 of x, of x in there, what I wanted to do was kind of get you to realize that, okay, you can get the integral there, but if you expand that, and I go in here under menu and expand, then I put f1 of x in there. You can find that you can sort of see where that integral came from because you've got the x and the x squared, and then you've got the 2 and the x squared plus 1. So you can see where they, that fits the formula. So sometimes you can do the analysis in here to get an idea of, of why that integral worked rather than just uh, get the straight integral. Similarly, if I went up here and did this for f2 of x, and I got that one, and I actually went up and expanded f2 of x, that will actually give me the partial fractions. So I've, I've taken the original f2, which was the, I'll write it out in case you've forgotten what it was. If I did f2 of x, you can see that it's written like that, but now as I expand it out, I've got the partial fraction, so the a would be like 3 over 2, and the b would be like negative 1 over 2. Now, again, you have to do the, the work on this. You can't just get this off of CAS, but it's a really good way to check answers is to use the CAS. And I'll just finish off with this before I go to the last few things. Is just I'm going to clear that out of there, and just one other little trick I found that is very handy. Um, if I... That's really demonstrating the understanding there, Neil, I think. Sorry? It really, really helps demonstrate the understanding, like the, the mechanics behind it, rather than just the magic. Yeah, yeah well, I, I, I like think, that. you know, you've got to use those tools, but also, you know, I think it's a really good, it's like looking up the answers on the back of a book. You still have to do the work. You can't just um, yep. do it without. So I'm going to just do a simple one here, which uh, I'll just make it x um, squared minus 4. And um, so if we, if we do that, and I say I want to get the, the area, the indefinite integral. So I analyze the graph. I want to get the integral. Let's say I want to go from, uh, and I can just type in negative 2, and I can type in 2. You can see that in there, oops, I, made, I got that wrong. I wanted to go negative 3 to 3. So let me just do that again. Analyze, um, integral, negative 3 to 3. And you can see that you've got the area in here of negative 6. Again, if I went back here, I'll clear that out of there, and I wanted to get the integral. Again, it was shift plus, and I want to go from, say, negative 3 to 3. And I put in my, I think we're on F, oh, no, I think it's now F1 of X. Again, you can define these in the calculator and go and graph them in the, in the graph section, or you can um, def just use the ones that are already defined after you've graphed them. If I did that, I'll get negative 6. A really handy little trick sometimes is to go in here, and instead of splitting up the whole thing into all the different, um, you know, area from, with the limits, you can actually just go in there, whack an absolute value sign around that, and it will give you the area, which is 15.3 approximately. But if you go up into here, and I grab that, bring it down, I can actually put an absolute value around that, which is, again, a useful way to check it. You'd still have to show the steps by hand, but if you wanted to check this 43.6. So that's just a, a very handy sort of... But I just encourage you to get your students to look at those things in there and use those uh, options in there, but go and check them in the catalog. Now, mm. is that any, if there's any questions, I'm not reading my, my sheet. I'm just um, doing the, just uh, advise me if anybody asks a question and you want me to go, but I'm just going to continue on. I've got a couple more things to show you, and then we'll, um, I'll leave it at that. I mentioned the notes. I'm going to start a new document, um, get rid of that. Now, with the 
the notes page. Before I, I mentioned the calculator before, but one thing you can do with the notes page, and I've got a couple of documents up here. I'm going to get them out. Um, I'm going to drag this across. I've done the notes page in here, and I'll bring that across and let's have a look at it. I'm going to run through that. I don't know if I have enough time to go through it, but if, if you don't follow all that, I've actually get, downloaded this, and I've got a, a notes page, and I'll run you through the start of it and see how far we get. But that ex clearly explains how to put the notes in, how to uh, put the text in, how to put the mask boxes in, how to um, hide and show various things that you've got, because sometimes it's a little bit uh, cumbersome when you first look at it and see how it works. But that's all explained in, in, in a fairly simple detail. And I've, I've got another one in there as well, which is if you don't want to do the Euler function, I've just got one that sort of covers the um, finding the magnitude of a vector. So even though we're doing calculus and stuff, if you don't, I th the thing is you want to encourage students to try some of these things, even if you don't particularly want to do them yourself. So just going, I've got a notes page out now open, so I'm just going to say, um, insert, um, I won't go through the whole thing, I don't think I have time, so I'll just give you a quick idea. I could go, oops, insert um, x0, if, uh, again, that's all, then the mass box, I go control M, if I then put x0 in there, you'll find that I can go and put these values in, and in this case, I'd want to insert say 5, or, or I might put in 2 in for x0. Now remember the control L was the uh, var, but, or I can do, uh, I'm just going to do another shortcut here. Uh, I can go store, but let's say I do x0, I want to put in 0, and I want to store that in. I can use the control store, or if I want to go, I can, I can go on a keyboard, I can go uh, the reverse, which is that, that one there, and I'm going to put that in for x0. So that's just using that shortcut because I've used it on the keyboard. And I've got it the other way around. It's actually got to go in there because I'm using the define instead of the store. So you can see the define is colon equals, but the store is equals colon. So if I do that, I've got the x0 in there. I won't go through all of this, but just to give you a quick uh, example of that, if once I'm in there, I want to go and uh, do the actions, um, the formatting, sorry. I'm just going to get out of that for a second because there's more things I want to show you but let me just go into here if I go menu math box options math box attributes again this is all spelled out on the sheet but say I wanted to just hide the output there rather than show all of it then it means that I'm only seeing what I'm putting in so if I happen to put a 2 in there um, it, it just stores that in and then I can go off and do my calculations with x0 and all that I'll just flash up the um, menu the Euler one for a minute and without going through the whole thing with you, but you can see in here um, that's starting the x0. I'm putting, I put one in for the x0 there. I scroll down. I've gone and put an x max and a y0 and a h, which is sort of what I did before. Now, you don't have to do that. You can use the function, but if somebody, students want to get something going with a mass box and save it as a file and just call it up so they, can, they know what things are, they're putting in, you can actually hide everything and you get the Euler function, and I've sort of explained in there and gone through and say how you can actually go back and hide them all. And then when you're all finished, you can kind of clean it up. So you're putting in one into the x0, two in for the x max, and putting in your h, and, and you can get your Euler function up that way. You don't have to do it that way, but you can um, encourage them something. It can be um, cosine rule. It can be whatever. Just encourage them to use a math box and show them a couple examples. And you might only get one or two or five students doing it. But it's worth showing them because in this day and age, we, we try to encourage students to explore the technology, and I think it's a question of getting over the technology threshold. Now, I'll go for another about five minutes here. I want to just give you a very quick one with slope fields. I'll go into here with um, – I've, I've got a document there on slope fields. Now, before I do, you should be aware that hopefully you all know that you've got the latest uh, – version that you do have this relation function in here, which it means you don't have to go and get the templates and get all the um, circles and all that. You can actually just go straight in there and, and type in x squared plus y squared equals 9 and that sort of stuff, so make sure you're aware of that. But just going down to differential equations, that slope field in there, again, I'll just pop the, the uh, menu up because I don't, I don't want to spend too long on this because a lot of you probably are already familiar with the slope fields, but I've just got an example in there of, of um, you can put in say y1 is equal to 2x. If you're going to put in a 
and then you and you can put in your zero zero parameters. I'm going to just uh, run through this example. Um, the split screen, which I'm going to show you in a minute with the uh, pro or the function writing, is in the table. That's there's some things in there you can sort of see. But again, you can go back and look at this later. Edit the table settings, but just to be aware that this is the ungrouping thing. We're, we're, there's now a shortcut, which is Control Six. Um, but I want to just get down to the last part. If you're going to, if you're doing a y1 and you've got some sort of um, differential equation with x and y, um, because there's a y1 and a y2 and a y3, you have to, you can put in the x, but you have to put in y1. And if you go down to the next function and it's y2, you'd have to put in y2. Now you can only graph one at a time, but you can put several of them in there, and they would, um, as long as you just put a one or a two next to the y value, then you can get, graph your differential equations, um, get your slope fields with that. And they can say, this is y2, I've got cosine y2, so um, you can sort of see that you've got that. So that document's there for you to go and look at later. So let me just go with the last thing, and then I'll pass over to Peter. Um, this is the main thing I wanted, I really would encourage you to do something like uh, what I'm going to show you now, even if you don't want to do it. I think you should really encourage your students, because with the whole emphasis on um, programming and all the sort of things that are happening in, within the um, world that they, you don't have to do a special math three and four. You can actually do it in the um, lower levels and get them doing functions. But one of the things is just writing a function. Now I'm going to do a function. I'm going to. I was going to. I've got a couple of things here, but I'm just going to explain to you that there's two ways to write a function. I, I think Brian did one before with programming, but I think it encourage you because most of these things, the commands you've got there are actually functions. So if I go to functions in there and I select um, new. Hang on. I go across program editor and go new. You can see that I can then put it in there. Now I'm going to type in uh, vector. Um, I'm going to call it vector <laughs> matrix because I've yeah, already, already written a couple of other ones that are just finding it. Because it's because uh, we're doing uh, trigonometry. Uh, sorry, because we're doing calculus and stuff. I'm going to do do a vector uh, vector calculus sort of example here rather than just finding it with the standard vectors. It's important you click function. Um, I mean, you can write a program, but the function is, is very powerful because all the things you've called up, all these other commands in the catalog, they're all basically functions. The difference is a function will produce a, re, a result, uh, whereas a, a program is basically a, a process. It's also important to go in here and, and do the show in catalog. So those are the, you get a name, function, show, and catalog. Now, once you've done that, you've got the, the screen. Now, I've, you could actually have gone, um, and I'll just mention this. I could have gone Control I, and I could have actually just done Program Editor as a separate page if I'd wanted to. But <laughs> I actually got, gone back the old way of doing it. Yeah, now, that's you can see now I've got two pages up yeah, there on the new. Uh, oh. So what I'm going to do is I've just deleted it, but I'm going to split it. Now one of the commands there I can go up to the I can go in here into the um, docs and and page layout and all that. But one of the shortcuts was Control. 4 and Control 6. So if I do Control 6, it actually splits that into two separate pages. If I do Control 4, it brings it back into together. And I'm going to split them up and go Control 6. I'm going to go over to 1.2. I'm going to just define, this is different than the one I got on the sheet. I'm just going to define the matrix as A and B. And in here, I'm just going to make a one, one line command. I'm going to go trig cosine negative 1. And I'm going to go control fraction. Now I want to put the the dot product in there. Now you could say, oh, where's the dot product? Okay, yeah. So this because it, you're not in the calculator menu, you're actually in the programming. You'd have, you'd have to either write out or type out dot product, or you'd have to go and find it in the in the D's. So you type D and go down to dot product. Now I'll just show you. It, it's worth doing this once or twice and with an exercise just to make sure. I can go A, comma B. And down here, I want to divide by the norm. So again, I can go and find it in the calculator under the calculus or matrix menus under norm. But I'm just in there. I can type out the word norm, but I'll actually do it from the catalog. So if I go down here to norm, OK, you can say it's just norm of a matrix. So I can put A in there. And I can do norm of B in here. So let me do that again. I can times it. I'm almost finished. I'll do the norm of B. So when I've done that. One of the shortcut commands, I can go in here to under menu and get it, but you can see it's um, one of the check syntax and score was control B. So that's what I mentioned before about these um, shortcuts. So from there, I can just go control B for the, again, it's on that sheet. 
So it says matrix successfully stored. It means if I go back in here, I've got, and again, the var list, one of the shortcuts was control L. So if you're on a keyboard, you just do control L, you can see your, your matrices in there. I'm going to define uh, matrix. Now I'm going to show another shortcut here. So if I go in here and I get a matrix um, under the templates, and let's say I just do a, a two by two by two, or two by, sorry, one by two. If I want to add an extra row to it, I just go control, sorry, not control. I'm going to escape that. I think it was shift. Um, let me go back, control Y. All right, I'll get it again. Hang on, bear with me. If I get the menu, if I do shift um, carriage return, I get myself an extra column. If I control Z that, well, I'll, I'll just do, if that, that will give me an extra, I can keep adding rows, or I can go shift carriage return, add, shift carriage return, that adds more columns, okay? So that's a shortcut rather than having to go define the thing. I'm going to take it right back to there. I'm going to put in um, sign. I'm just going to type it in now because we're running out of time. If I do sine of 2x in there, and I do cosine of uh, 2x in there, and I define that as vector A, um, I'm, again, I, I'll do control store, rather, or I can use that um, equals colon if I want to put that in for A. If I want to do then uh, shift derivative, and I do, I'll, I should make this T, but I've already started with X, so I'll just keep it as X. I can go A there. It doesn't really matter as long as I've defined it. So I've got my A and B, but if I want to now store that in for B, so I'm gonna, this time I'm going to go on the keyboard. I'm going to go equals colon, and I'm going to put that in for B. If I then go to the var, I can do vector, vector matrix. Again, I can put the matrices in there, but if, if I've set that up to have vectors, the matrices in there, I can just simply go A comma B, and I get the uh, 90, it, it's a, a right angle because they're um, perpendicular vectors. So almost finished. I'm going to go back to vector actions, and I'm going to clear out the A to Z ones. So I've only got now var in there. I'm going to go back to the other page. Remember, if I do Control-4, it brings them back together. If I want to highlight that page and get rid of it, I can click over here. One of the shortcuts was Control-K, which is selecting. So if you do Control-K, I can select that and just delete it. I'm going to get rid of everything on the page. Again, you don't have to, but it's helpful if you just clear the whole thing out. I've cleared the history, but I still have that, that variable in there. So what I'm now going to do, I've got this stored. I'm going to go, this is the key part, and I've got this all written out on a sheet, and I've got it for a couple of examples. So I'm, I'm, I'll just mention this to you, creating functions. You can go through this whole thing in here on this sheet, um, explaining it all. I'll just finish this off and pass over to Peter. I go document. I go down to file. I go down to save as. It's important. And this is, it's all stepped out for you. You need to go. And this is the thing you need to try to get yourself over and get the students over because some of the students are going to love this and some aren't. If I go to my documents and I, go, I need to select my library, and if I call that vector, vector um, I'll call it vector matrix, whatever. I've got this phone on my, so I'll just do it like that. I call that vector matrix. I'm going to save it in my library. And then when I've done that, I'm now importantly, I have to go back and refresh my libraries. And it's currently in the library. If I go across here to six, you'll see that it's currently in here under vector matrix. But if I start a whole new document, and I go to calculator, and I go into libraries, and I go down here, I've got my vector matrix command in there. And I can put it in. I'd have to define a, a vector, which I haven't defined there. But if I put the vector in as A and B, um, I would get the result. Now, the, the examples I've written for you, I've done it with just not with vectors. I've written it with uh, in, in terms of just putting in the parameters um, uh, 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 I, I, J, K, and L. That sort of, sorry, I, J, K, or I1, J1, K1, and that sort of stuff. So I just encourage you to get some students, they're not all going to want to do it, but some students would love to do that, get them into that function, and get control over the calculator, write their own functions, and just let, let them go with it. Don't You don't have to tell them what to do. Just get them over so they're comfortable with it. Yeah. Okay, that's me. You, you have a second to calculate. 
could get somebody else to do that, but um, you, you've re-engineered re-engine the calculator yourself. Yeah, you're getting control over the technology, yeah. which I think is what you want to get the students to do. Yeah. Let them go yeah, wild. very good. Sorry, Peter, mm. if I took too long. Okay, oh, thanks, Neil. I'll switch over to uh, switch over to Peter there. I don't know if it was Peter that was making those uh, noises in the background. Uh, did some strange ones there. Um, yeah, look, Neil, I've, I've been teaching the special maths course for a while now, but I tell you what, uh, whenever I go to a conference, Neil is one of the one of the guys I seek out because you're always finding something new, mate. Um, yeah, some of those shortcuts, in particular. Um, and I think particularly emphasising, the way you're doing it, emphasising the understanding. I ran a, a live poll in the background there asking people, asking the participants, uh, for example, how many had used that domain function before. I hadn't, I hadn't used that. Um, I can see that being a real, a real time saver. And, um, and now most, most of the participants had not seen that before. So, uh, so thank you. Just, it's just those little things, and that's that all adds up. That's, uh, that's, that's great. Thank you. Um, and Peter, what's going on there? Uh, can you see my screen, Brian? We can indeed, mate. And we're hearing all sorts of strange noises from your from your household. <laughs> well, that's nothing so, uh, out of the ordinary. Well, nothing out of the ordinary. <laughs> So new to the specialist maths course is uh, this oh. concept of uh, arc length, so working out the length of a plane curve. And your calculus menu um, houses the arc length command. So if you press uh, menu, I'm in a um, calculator page at the moment, and then press 4 for calculus. And then if you scroll up or down, uh, B corresponds to arc length, so if you press uh, uh, enter, that will paste the command onto the entry line. And then the syntax is quite straightforward. You put in uh, the right-hand side uh, of, uh, of a function. So you might go with something like uh, x squared uh, plus 1. Uh, we'll add the 1 here. And then uh, it's comma, the independent variable, which is x, comma, your starting point, which is 0, x equals 0, comma, your end point, which is x equals 5, and then press Enter, and that will give you the arc length um, or from x equals 0 to x equals 5 on the graph of y equals um, x squared plus 1. And there it comes out um, as an exact answer. And if you pressed uh, Control Enter, uh, it would come out as a, a decimal answer. So that's uh, well and good. Um, what's also part of the specialist maths course uh, is the length of a curve where the curve uh, is uh, defined in terms of a, in terms of a parameter. So we're looking at a parametric curve uh, where we'll have the parameter as t, and um, we'll have the curve specified as x equals f of t and y equals g of t. Uh, what we'll do in machine language, however, in terms of the uh, Inspire CAS, is instead of f of t and g of t, we'll use uh, x1 of t and y1 of t. Now, I can't think of another way of doing this um, directly uh, using the current command. So I've set up uh, a notes page, which is... Uh, uh, in conjunction with a, a graphs page, and the graphs page is set to parametric mode. So I'll just describe the architecture of uh, this page first of all. Uh, it's a notes page, and the first line there, length of a parametric curve, that's text that you can uh, type out uh, without any dramas. And then if I go down, this particular object here is a math box, uh, and what you can do in a math box is that you can perform calculations just as you would be able to do in the calculator application. Um, the nice thing about the notes application, it works a little bit like TI Interactive, um, which is a, a forerunner to, to this, um, whereby uh, we can define uh, functions and have them set up so that they're dynamic and also linked. 
So what I've done here is I've defined um, x1 of t, or assigned actually, I can tell I've used the assign command because it's colon equals. I've assigned x1 of t to be cos t. Now, um, as Neil mentioned, just to give you an idea of how you uh, insert a math box, um, what you can do there is you can uh, press menu in a notes page and you can press 3 for insert and then 1 or enter and that, that way you insert a math box. And you'll also note next to it that there's a shortcut which says Control M, which is one of Neil's um, shortcuts. So rather than having to go through the menu, you can press Control M and that will automatically um, insert uh, um, a math box. And you can tell you're in a math box because you've got that red dash border. And so, for example, I won't complete this particular instruction, but you could have something like, um, you know, f of x, and I'll assign that to be um, x squared. And then once you press uh, enter, what happens is that um, the uh, function f of x is recognised as uh, x squared um, throughout that problem. And as you can see, I've got um, three pages at least in this problem, pages one, two and three. The first digit there represents um, a problem. So I'll just um, backspace there and get out of that. That's just illustrating um, how these are created. And so uh, I've decided to go for an, a very, very simple example where if we've got x1 of t is assigned to be cos t and y1 of t is assigned to be sine t, then hopefully you'll realise from those two parametric equations that the Cartesian equation uh, that's governed by those two equations is x squared plus y squared equals 1, um, which is the equation uh, of a circle. And so if we were doing the arc length um, of, a, of a circle of radius 1, we would expect to get uh, an answer of uh, 2 pi. So our starting value is uh, a equals um, 0. So again, there I've assigned a to be 0. Um, notice there in, you've got a green uh, arrow. So if I just go into this math box, we can change um, its appearance if you wanted to um, by pressing uh, its control menu, which is a right click um, on the computer. And you can go to uh, math box um, attributes and um, you can change the appearance. Now, the first one there says show input and output. So my rule here is if students are using these note pages in the exam, I think it's prudent to show the input and the output because if you change an input and press enter, you can be confident that you see a change in the output. So I think um, students need to see the input and output um, in their particular math boxes. Uh, you've also got some uh, other features there that you could change um, if need be. So we've got uh, a is 0 and um, b is 2 pi. So we're going for um, a hoon. We're going for uh, a lap of the, well, the unit circle. And what I've done here is I've assigned the length. This is the formula for the length of um, a, a parametric curve from parameter, say, t equals a to t equals b. It's the square root of the um, derivative of x1 all squared plus uh, the derivative of y1 uh, all squared. And what you'll note there um, is I've already performed the calculation. I'll change these parametric equations uh, in a moment just to illustrate the update that you get in the change um, of results. And see that the length there, we get a, a, um, a value there of 2 pi. Uh, I've also just been a little bit careful as well, uh, recognising that um, the I don't have any affiliation with the VCAA and um, I'm not sure about the transparency of their policies sometimes with regards to use of CAS symbolically in examinations, but just in case I've set up a math box there which publishes the derivative of x1 of t and the derivative um, of y1 of t. 
Now this is an example where it's a very simple example that you could be done by hand. So I'd be advocating that students did this by hand, but I'm just illustrating how you would do it with the machine. So if we right click or control menu into Mapbox attributes there, and we could change that insert symbol into an equal sign and press OK, and therefore we'd have the derivative of x1 of t comes out as negative sign t. And I've also thought it might be prudent to show the indefinite integral to show that um, the square root of that is actually equal um, to t. And of course then what you do is you substitute um, 0 and 2 pi into t and you end up with 2 pi minus 0 which gives you um, 2 pi. So let's see how this works in a linked page. If we go to the next page here, this is a, um, a parametric uh, curve, a parametric graphing mode where x1 of t is cos t and y1 of t is sine t. And if I press tab, very good. I'm in parametric graphing mode. It's gone down to x2 of t and y2 of t because we've got something stored in um, x1 of t and y1 of t. So if I go up and um, make it uh, our two new parametric equations are x1 of t equals cos cubed of t. So raise that to the power of 3, come down and we have y1 of t equals sine cubed of t and we press uh, enter. Uh, we get an update uh, on our parametric equations and this is a beautiful curve which I think was first mentioned by Leibniz. It's called um, an asteroid. Um, it's a hypocycloid with uh, four cusps. Um, but we can also work out the length um, uh, that uh, the length required or the length around that particular um, parametrically defined uh, curve. So if we go back to the previous page, um, what you'll see is we've already got our updates. x1 of t is cos cubed of t, y1 of t is sine cubed of t, and we end up with um, updated derivatives. Um, an updated arc length which is equal to 6 in this particular um, instance and we, we will have an updated uh, indefinite integral if I can um, just get hold of uh, that, press escape and escape and then come down and, and there it is uh, there. So I think that that curve is formed by a rotating circle inside um, a, uh, another circle and the point moves around such that it traces out that, um, that beautiful cur uh, curve called an asteroid. Not an asteroid, um, an asteroid. So I, I think it would be prudent for students to um, prepare something like that and take into the, uh, take into the exam for sure. Um, and just to illustrate how you get to the parametric graphing mode, on a graphs page you press menu, and then I don't like this menu name, Graph Entry Edit. I think it used to be called Graph Mode and I prefer that. So you press number three for Graph um, Entry Edit and it's number four for, uh, for parametric. And that's how you um, get into parametric uh, graphing mode, which I think is particularly uh, useful um, in vector calculus, uh, certainly. So there's that and then um, I've probably got enough time just for uh, one more uh, example. Uh, so that's the example that I used. I got it from um, Cambridge Specialist Maths Exercise 8E, page 359. Um, but what I might do is I might insert uh, a problem and I might have a brief discussion about uh, solving um, differential equations. So if we had a calculator, I could also do this in the notes page. Um, TI Inspire CAS has a um, differential equation solver which on face value should be extremely useful uh, for students. Um, now in multiple choice questions where there's no working out required, I think it's extremely safe uh, for students to use the differential equation solver to solve a, a differential equation. Um, 
they need to uh, have a look at it and see whether um, they get the same output as one of the five alternatives. If not, they may have to use a little bit of um, uh, by hand uh, algebra. But it comes down to a choice of accuracy and efficiency. Now, I think that anybody that's um, watching this webinar this evening, it should be incumbent upon you to contact the VCAA um, with regards to the use of this differential equation solver. There was a question last year in the exam, I think it was something like question 3A, and it was a classic salt in the tank uh, question where you end up solving a differential equation to work out um, a, 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 an expression or a function that gives you the amount of salt um, in, a, in, in the tank at a time t. Now, the question was worth three marks, and to me that sets off some alarm bells as to whether students could actually use the differential equation solver and get full marks. So it is incumbent upon teachers to, in my mind, to press the VCAA um, to find out exactly what the um, policy is. Um, to show you uh, in action, the previous year I think there was a very, very long multiple choice question. It's one of those um, kinematics questions uh, involving alternative forms for acceleration. And so I might finish off with just a, an example of this ilk where we might have a, a, a particle that's moving through a resisting medium and let's say that the acceleration of the particle uh, is given by negative um, open bracket g plus kv squared. So it's moving against gravity and it's also moving against a resisting medium which is proportional to the velocity squared. And um, we might also note that at uh, time zero, um, x equals zero and that the um, uh, particle has an initial velocity given by u. And what we would like to use our differential equation solver to be able to, to perform here is to find the maximum height reached by the particle whilst it's travelling um, in this resisting medium. So let's see how this all uh, unfolds. Uh, we'll press menu and then number four for calculus and then we scroll up or down until we find differential equation solver and we press enter and uh, we have um, pasted the desolve um, command onto an entry line. Now, uh, if we want to find the maximum height reached by the projectile while travelling in the resisting medium, we need a differential equation that links x and v. And so um, the v dt is not a good idea because that links t and v, but v to v dx is a good idea um, as, a, a, as our appropriate alternative form for acceleration. So if we type in v, multiplied by v dashed, all right? So that's v to v dx. And then we'll let that equal to negative, and then open bracket, g plus k times v squared. Go outside the bracket. Now the next part of the syntax is we need a space. So we press space, type in and, and then press another space. You could get and from the catalogue, that's another way of doing it. The next part of the syntax is to specify, in this instance, the boundary condition. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in v open bracket u equals zero, and then comma the independent variable which is x, comma the dependent variable which is v. and um, when we press enter, I'm hoping that we get a bit of a mess, um, but it should it should be v squared equals quite you know a complicated um, right hand side. So we'll see what happens when we press uh, enter, and we do indeed get that. If we have v of zero equals u, and then we solve this for x given 
uh, let's go with V equals zero because that corresponds to maximum height and K greater than zero and G greater than zero. There we go. So that gives you the expression for the um, uh, maximum uh, height. Uh, so the particle starts with an initial velocity of u and when it reaches its maximum height, um, its, you know, its final velocity is zero. And so that's the expression um, that you get for x in terms of k and g uh, and u. I think it is um, certainly worthwhile in these kinematic questions um, to be aware of the differential equation solver. And I'm hoping that questions like this in the exam aren't sort of worth an, an odd number of marks because it makes me think, well, for questions where working needs to be shown, whether the differential equation solver is, is, is um, valued by the examiners. But certainly in a multiple choice question where there's quite a few lines of work um, involved, I think it's um, a, a useful feature for students. So uh, that completes my um, part of the session, Brian. Terrific. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that, Peter. Um, can I also just mention a, a special thank you, as uh, participants may not be aware, but Peter Peter stepped in at the last moment or at the late moment to uh, to uh, come on board as a presenter for this webinar. Attendees may have noticed Ray Rosen uh, listed as a sleeper there um, in the list of panellists. Ray was originally uh, listed to be the presenter, but uh, then as things turned out, he was uh, only flying back um, into into Melbourne uh, amid or fairly shortly before the webinar. Nevertheless, he came along to uh, he got there in time to have a look at it. Um, and uh, yeah, so thanks also Ray, and thanks especially for Peter to step in. But um, on the the uh, differential equation, salt in the tank. Um, type of problem. I do recall, and I have mentioned this in webinars before, that uh, a specialist math student, a student of mine said, surely this is just so algorithmic, you should be able to do this in a notes page. And I said, yes, I believe you're right. And, and, and what's, what's more, I expect I know somebody who may have already developed such a notes page. And we contacted Ray and, uh, and he came through with the goods. It was already there. Uh, so thanks, thanks to Ray, thanks to Peter, uh, thanks also to Neil, uh, our, our first presenter, and Neil reading the, the chat feedback there. People are very impressed with that uh, list of shortcuts. Can I, can I just remind all attendees that following the webinar, uh, you will you will get a link, an email that links to where you can download these documents. So that includes that uh, that very handy document that Neil developed, and. Uh, TNS associated TI Inspire files, and also the link to the link to be able to download the full recording of this webinar. Uh, yes, I did remember to switch, switch on the recording button, so it will be available, and you can see bits and pieces of it also on our YouTube channel. I think that's the greatest link of the lot because you can download these things uh, and, and play them with your students, which I've done. I think that's a good way to do things. Um, can I give a plug for next week's webinar? What we've been looking at here are some tricky um, shortcuts and ideas, particularly for specialist mathematics, of course, but it hasn't really been, with, perhaps with the exception of the, the last one that, um, that Peter showed us, hasn't really been problem-based. Um, <coughs> If you've been watching, if you've been a regular in our webinar program, you will have seen Jim Lowe and Peter Fox's Problems Worth Exploring series. They're now up to episode three, and that will be next Tuesday. So you can register for that. If you're looking at the TI Australia website and you click on webinars, then you have the option to register for an upcoming webinar. This is the problems worth exploding, worth exploring. Um, or you can also look at a past webinar. And 
some of the attendees this evening were saying, I would like to watch this again and be able to pause and catch up on my calculator and maybe also view with your students. So here, here they all are. So what happens when you go into one of these? Here's one uh, from earlier on, on specialist mathematics. And you can go in here. This is Peter Flynn and Ray Rosen. And you can download all of the associated documents. You can also download or play live on your computer the webinar. You can do that for any of the past webinars. So leaving you with all of those wonderful links and ideas, uh, once again, I say thank you to our presenters. Uh, Peter. Thank you. And, and Neil. Thank you, thank you, Brian. And to wish everyone all the best. Good evening, and I will close the event.